I think it was yesterday, I was on Instagram, mm-hmm. and I saw your post about coming home after working here, <laughs> right? Yes. And it seems like a tornado hit your house. Oh, yeah. uh, everything was in disarray. And when I saw the first clip of the video, I'm like, whoa, what happened? You mm-hmm. know, because I know how orderly orderly you and Makai are, okay? Yes. And But then I saw it just opposed to what happened when you came back home. And so often, and I love about your post, um, you say a comprehensive man can come home from work, kiss his wife goodbye on her way to work, spend quality time with his baby children, and bring order to disorder. You were tired uh, when you got home, but thankfully, you have been trained uh, not to let your emotions rule you. Instead, that you must rule your emotions so that you can finish your day the right way. Yes. And so often as men, we we blow that opportunity. You know, um, I say the car, because when we come home, we're tired. We're sitting in the driveway or the garage oh, yeah. for about 30 minutes. So I say the car is the grown man's tent. Yeah. You know, and I remember one day when I got home, I uh, had a construction company. and I was really tired. And I'm sitting in my car, and my instructor at the time, name was Kajana Seshawayo, uh, rest in peace. He calls me, he says, uh, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm sitting in my driveway. He says, for what? I said, well, I'm just getting off work and I'm, I'm tired. And he says, he says, you didn't, he said, no, I didn't train you to allow your emotions to rule you in any moment. You must rule them at all times. I said, what are you talking about? What does this have to do with training? He says, right now, you're denying your family of love, joy, and peace because you're tired. He says, right now, put that emotion of being tired off to the side and go home and bring joy to your home. You know, you exuded what a comprehensive man is when you came home yesterday. So I just would like for you to share, man. You're young. How old are you now, Chris? 28. Okay, everybody. He's 28 (laughs) years old. Okay. And ironic, I was, ironically, I was 28 when I got married. I wouldn't have, I didn't respond the way you did. Okay. Of course, you've been trained differently. Um, you know, you, you're miles ahead of the game than I was. But I want you to share, like, when you first got home, you know, how did you stop yourself from snapping like so many of us as, as men do? Right. So one thing, you know, the first thing is that on my way home, I was talking to my wife over the phone, and uh, she told me that my son was was napping. <laughs> So what's funny about that is if he's asleep and it's, what, 6, six o'clock, <laughs> 7 o'clock, he's asleep, that means he's about to be up for another <laughs> five, six hours. <laughs> so who's going to have to be up with him? I am. So even before I pulled up, I had to mentally get ready to, to take care of him as long as I needed to, you know, while he was up playing and running. Um, my son, he's one who... Is very energetic, very enthusiastic. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy, man. Climbs on everything. And so, um, you know, I walk in the house, and, again, I see, I see a disaster. So right here, I'm going to play the video for those of you who can watch, and I'll talk alone for those of you who are listening. So right here, I mean, right just from this clip right here, there's papers on the floor. What is that? The uh, car seat, car seat, toys everywhere. And this is when you walking in, right? Yes, sir. All right. I'm going to push play here. All right, let me pause right there. The couch is a mess. Yeah. The living room's a mess. Oh, I yeah. mean, just toys everywhere. Most men, I'm telling you, because I talk to them, they lose it. And, so, and your wife, but your wife works yes. midnight as a nurse in, what is it, um... Trauma, number trauma. One, thank you. Yes, number one trauma, trauma hospital. Hospital, yeah, is, in yes. Detroit. Yes, so she's tired as well, and Definitely. most of the time we quickly want to blame someone. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So early on in the in our you know our marriage when we first had Canyon, right? Mm-hmm. Um, when we first had our first son, um, I was frustrated whenever the home would, whenever our house wouldn't be in order. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I'll be like, we got to figure out a way to, to keep it up. <laughs> but I had to begin to learn that it's not as, as easy as it seems to just take care of a child while you're at home with them, especially the older he gets, right? The older the child gets, the more energy they, they, they pull from you. 
because you have to give them so much more attention. And Makaya um, breastfeeds. Yes. Right? And yes. she has, you have two children. Two children now. Yes. And then so. she has to go to work at mid, <laughs> for midnights, okay? Yeah. And so that's a lot. And so, some, I mean, as men, we forget that, you yeah. know? And not even, in, and then for our wives who do work and say our children are at a babysitter, we have a nanny at home. Yes. And we get home. Wife is just as tired as we are, you know? And if we are used to or feel that we're, entitled to a special treatment and our wives aren't yes. that's when dissension creeps in yes you know and so uh, i'm gonna push play again man i just want you to just elaborate so right here you're seeing all that man the kitchen there's that's graceland <laughs> yes that's all right graceland. and canyon was somewhere else and the kitchen is is not in order no right? so it was a sink full of dirty dishes. dishes so imagine yeah. fellas you come home you're tired as soon as you walk through the door the entire house is a mess Canyon, was he on the couch? I didn't see him. Canyon was, was, he was around there playing. So your son's playing around, two-year-old son. Yes. Graceland is playing around. How old is, how old is Graceland? Graceland is six months. Six months yep. old. And your wife is getting ready to go to work. Yes, sir. So the emotion says, man, if we're, if we're not comprehensive, basically able to articulate how we're feeling, of course, you know, but also being able to process those emotions in that moment so that you won't be ruled by them. Yes. So, of course, you're going to feel anger. But then when you really take time to process why you're angry, then you can realize you probably shouldn't be angry. Because then you can understand why this home is this way. And so when I just oppose that to what's, what's happening now, now this is the beautiful thing about um, being a man, um, a comprehensive man, per se, being more so than a man, because you want to be able to bring peace and order to everywhere you, you go. Yeah. So for you to come in your home and to bring order and peace in a matter of moments and then to rule your own emotions to bring the peace and order inside yourself. Mm-hmm. A lot of times we allow our souls to take over and control us, which we know the soul is the seat of our emotions. And so we easily allow just ourselves only to operate in anger and frustration instead of just taking a moment and say, well, wait a minute, why am I angry? Why am I frustrated? Yeah. It's something we as men all um, definitely have fallen short on. I don't know if you have fallen short on this yet, have you? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, Can you yeah. name a time when you came home and you lost it? Yeah, I mean, like I said earlier in our marriage, there were times where I would come home and, you know, uh, I would clean up. Mm-hmm. I would clean up and put the whole house in order. Mm-hmm. And then when she would leave out, it would be a mess, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and I would be, I would be pissed off mm-hmm. because when I'm home with the children, mm-hmm. right, I can take care of them, clean up the home and then go to bed and everything mm-hmm. is organized. Mm-hmm. But I didn't understand why she couldn't or why, you know, do you understand now? I do understand. You, enlighten, enlighten us, brother. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> what? So, you know, one thing I, I would say is that there is there's more on her than on me. So, like, mm. the children respond to her differently than they do me. Uh, my wife was their food for so many months, mm. and she still is my, my daughter's food, right? Mm-hmm. And so they demand, there. it's more demanding on her body, right? It's more demand, and she's more emotional, so she's more... Uh, aware and affected by when one of them cry or when one of them seem like mm. they're not getting the attention that, that they need. Whereas me, I'll give them attention. I'll, you know, tend to their emotions. But then I'm like, okay, at this point, yeah. I just got to I gotta <laughs> figure out a way to order. occupy them and yes. put things in order. Yes. But she, you know, responds and deals with them differently than I do. So you, you mentioned your, your training. You says, I've been trained to not let my emotions rule you. Yes. Can you explain to uh, the men or young men listening now or watching, what is that type of training? And I know you're probably talking about the cave, but in other things in life as well. And then could you tell us, like, is there something that they could do if they don't have access to what we do? Like, is there something in their daily lives or something they can do when they get home or what could they do to train themselves where their emotions won't rule them in a moment like that? Right. So, you know, for me, training, um, 
training to rule my emotions and not be ruled by them. So in the cave, especially when I was undergoing training uh, as a student and not necessarily as, as Jason's assistant, um, there were times when Jason would, would test us in a way that, you know, you would break in a minute and you would mm-hmm. want to be done. And then the next go round, he would want to push us further. And he would push us to the point to where we had to, to pull from within ourselves to go further than we ever have or thought that we could go, right? So if it's a push-up and, and I'm pressing for 20 push-ups, right? Now my body is burning. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. And then, you know, Jason will say, all right, you're going to go for three minutes straight, <laughs> <laughs> nonstop, now go. And after about 10, after about one minute, you feel exhausted. You feel like I'm done. It's over. But then you have to, you have to flip, flip a switch and just keep going and figure out and find a pace to keep pushing yourself until time is up. Is there anything you'd like to say before we uh, close out? Well, one thing I would say or one way I would close is as men, our emotions are so powerful that we have the ability to, to bless people significantly or curse and hurt people. Mm-hmm. You know, think about the, the generations that are affected either positively or negatively based mm-hmm. on the way we allow our emotions to yes. rule us. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so I would just say be very mindful of how you, you know, allow your thoughts and your emotions to, to dictate your actions. That's very good. Um, and, and try your best. Strive to be uh, a comprehensive man and mm-hmm. rule and deal with all of the, the, the issues and the things that, you know, you fight and, and, and I guess, battle with from within on a regular basis. Yeah, that's very good. You know, I'm actually thinking, you know, of, you know, a lot of times men will say, well, how do you know the right time? Because, just say like with you, I'm pretty sure you and Micaiah had conversations on, okay, what can we do to keep things in order? How can I support you? We already know. I've, I've witnessed a couple where you would talk with her, like, okay, what do we need to do? Yeah. Um, a lot of times as men, when you talk about um, using your voice as a, or, or become a source of healing than a source of pain, um, I talk about in Battle Cry, the huddle principle. And so uh, and I, uh, uh, Tom Brady just retired yeah. and I use him as an example when he played the Atlanta Falcons yeah. and they were getting blew out, you know, and could you imagine if he would have came back to the huddle <laughs> said, hey, man, you know what? I already got my rings. You know, I got enough rings right now yeah. and uh, I'm, I'm hurt. You know, what I'm saying I'm sore and no team has ever come back from a deficit this great in Super Bowl history. So we, right. we straight. Let's just chalk this up. The entire team morale would have been, been done. Yeah. As a husband, if you would have came home, either with that mentality or the other, you could have changed the entire outcome yes. of that situation in the worst way. Instead, like Tom Brady or any leader, understand we have to understand, we have to read the room, read, okay, is this a good time for me to talk to my wife about this? Probably not because she's on her way to work. You, yeah. you get it? Oh, yeah. And so you you went to your huddle, which is your home, and said, hey, we're going to get this in order. Have a great day, babe. Kiss her. All right? Mm-hmm. And you took care of it, yeah. and you won that game. And as men, we have to understand that huddle principle. You don't want to bring – you got to understand what your team can take. Yes. You know, certain players can take that Mr. Brady – arm is hurting he can't really he doesn't feel strong throwing the ball right other teammates get discouraged and so for you to know that read the room in your huddle read what's going on and call the right play and then execute it you know i give you a lot of props especially at 28 years old all right (laughs) and so the the longer we allow our lives gentlemen the longer we allow our lives to be defined by this world, who really doesn't even understand what a man is anyway, as long as we define by what we do, we'll never become who we truly are. You know, it's like well, who we truly, not are, but created to be. Yeah. Everything will be up and running soon, especially the membership-based trainings where literally, fellas, I'm going to give you everything that I, I, I have to help me win and uh, win the wars within daily, all right? Uh, Again, thanks, Chris, for being here. Take care, fellas. Shalom. Shalom.